thought I would come in with a seasonal favorites video today because there's some uh, newer things I've been using and loving this summer and I wanted to share. Uh, and as per usual, I'm gonna go through my categories because I'm a girl who likes categories. We'll have a little bit of everything, but I'm gonna start off with clothes and accessories. I have recently discovered the dress department at Old Navy and been loving it. These are my two top favorites. I have maybe four dresses from Old Navy. Um, these are my two favorites right now. I love this. It's like a slub knit um, faux, I mean the real buttons, but they don't actually open button front. This one's sadly no longer available, but I just think their dresses are really nice and um, very affordable. This one is currently available. Uh, this is uh, like a cami style dress. I've been really enjoying this. This is a midi length, really, which I didn't think suited my body type, but I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, and I just love these. They wash up great, they dry well, um, and they're just easy. And the great thing about Old Navy is there's usually some sort of promotion. I have a Gap card. I, I buy a lot of Gap stuff for the kids, so I always have rewards and, and different coupons and things. So you, I find I never really have to pay full price for anything from any of the like Gap stores, Athleta, Old Navy, um, Gap, etc. So that, that works out well. I bought myself a new pair of Birkenstocks this summer because when I was cleaning out my office at the old house, I found a stack of gift cards. This is a little embarrassing, I suppose. That I, I don't know if it's embarrassing. I guess I had just kind of tucked them away for some day. Well, the day came, um, and I actually got quite a, a few nice things with gift cards that I totally forgot I had. So I had a $100 gift card to Nordstrom. These are 100, they were $100 when I bought them. So all I had to pay was the $6 for shipping. And I got these, um, these sandals. Now these are like a synthetic leather. Um, I've worn the Arizona style sandals since I was a teenager and really, really like them. These do break in a little slower, I would say, than the natural leather ones, uh, but I love the white. I've been wearing them all summer. They're super comfortable. I have extremely problematic feet. These are probably the only kind of casual sandals I can really wear without hurting myself. Um, and so I love, love, love them. And then for accessories, this is something I've had I've had these for about six months now. I am obsessed. I finally got the AirPods and I went ahead and, and got the AirPod Pros because I don't know, I just have weird ears, I guess. And the regular AirPods never stayed in my ears. These are nice because they have a little, uh, the ear tip, I'm not sure what they call this part. It's interchangeable. It comes with three different sizes and you can um, you know, swap them out depending on your ear size. They still don't quite stay in my ears 100%. Like I said, I think I just have weird ears. So I went ahead and I think it was for like 12 bucks or something. I got these little ear hooks on Amazon. It actually comes with a set of three. This is just one and it clips right onto my little, my AirPod um, Pro case, which I love from Rifle Paper Company. It just, um, that just like clips over the case. I'll link that too. But these are great because then I can wear the AirPod, they just like, they're little sleeves that slide over the, the AirPods and I can wear them and they don't budge. And even when I'm running and sweating and <laughs> dancing or whatever I'm doing, they stay in and I use these every single day. I use them for editing, I use them to listen to music, to podcasts, to audiobooks, everything. And for working out, like I said, and they've just, they were definitely worth it. I like, I, I'm an Apple person. I have an iPhone, I have iMac, I have a MacBook, I have an iPad, you know, like I've got, got all the Mac things. And these just, I mean, it's just a seamless interface with all those devices. I'm sure other, other uh, Bluetooth headphones are the same, but I don't know, it works out really well. For personal care, I did update my, um, like, I guess we call this makeup. It's tinted moisturizer, essentially, but it definitely has a tint, and it's what I wear on my face as my face base, if it were. Um, so I had been using Juice Beauty products for years. It's been four or five years now, and I still use this one. I've been using this this summer. This is the Juice Beauty 
um, SPF 30 tinted moisturizer. I use sand. This is a year round color for me. And then I usually just mix in some other shade to tone match whatever my skin is. Um, even with wearing sunscreen um, every day, I just have the kind of skin tone that tans very easily. I just do. I wear 50 on my body and I still just get, I just, it just happens. Not complaining. <laughs> just, I know I don't sit outside and tan, but I'm outside a lot with the kids, especially this summer. Everybody's a little older now. We spend, I don't know, anywhere from like four to six hours outside. So there's a lot of outside time. Anyway, I added something to my regimen um, because I, I needed something darker to mix in with this. I just continually love this product. It's a great moisturizer with tint to it but it's too light for my skin right now. Um, so I recently in the last few months became a Thrive subscriber. It's a, kind of a subscription. I don't know, I love Thrive Market. I think it's great. And I wanted to try some of their skincare products. So I, I ordered this Well People, but it's Well with the E is spelled like a three. See that? It's a three. Anyway, um, so it's another tinted moisturizer. I'm trying to remember exactly what the bio tint. And it also has SPF in it, mineral-based sunscreen, which is what I prefer um, for myself and my children. And in the medium shade, it's actually quite dark, but mixed in with my Juice Beauty, it matches my skin perfectly right now. And I went ahead and got the matching concealer um, because I had quite a bit of um, adult acne, hormonal acne on my chin, which has been fun, but this is great because it matches perfectly and it's not so thick that I feel like I'm wearing like caked on makeup. My skin feels like it can breathe using all of these products because they are basically moisturizers with tint to them, but I've really been enjoying them. I like the, this, I feel like this product gives a bit more coverage than my Juice Beauty stuff does, which I also appreciate right now with the uneven skin tone. But yeah, there is that. For home goods, so I mentioned the stack of gift cards I found. Well, one of them was to the Disney store. And so back a couple months ago, I ordered a, I think it's a 90th anniversary special edition Mickey waffle maker that makes the small Mickey Mouse waffles. Like, at least you used to be able to get at the parks. I don't know what they have recently. Because nobody's going to Disney World right now for a long time. This I thought of as a housewarming gift for my kids to the new house. Um, I make Mickey waffles several times a week. We love our waffle maker and it's kind of the kind that's double flipped so I can actually make six waffles at one time. And I found a waffle recipe that I've tweaked just a little bit using non-dairy um, alternatives um, in a one-to-one -one ratio that I will link below for you too. I can't remember, I just Googled it. So it's not from a site that I follow regularly, but it's a great recipe for this kind of waffle. It makes a really fluffy waffle. Um, my kids like them like kind of soft and not crispy. I think the longer you cook it, the crispier they get, but it has a great consistency. And I think it's because it has so much baking powder and it really, they really puff up. But we've been loving our Mickey waffle maker. Sadly, I just checked to see if they still have it and I don't see it online, but um, I did see a couple people selling it on eBay uh, for just about the price that it was. I think it was just shy of $100, maybe $80 or something, which was a lot, but again, not a $100 gift card, so I used it and it worked out great. Moving on to multimedia, I wish I had more time to read right now. I really, there's just, like I said, there's a lot of outdoor time with the kids and it's just like a lot of family time in general which I'm relishing uh, given the current situation there's been no school no camp no extracurricular activities no really going much of anywhere um, to be honest and it's been fine it works out well for me as an introvert but uh, not so much time to read so it's been taking me a long time to get through the couple of books that I've been working on for a while one is this one more Myself by Alicia Keys, and I'm really enjoying it. I love her voice, I love her story. Um, it's very motivating and empowering, um, but I haven't finished it yet. I'm only about halfway through. And I'm about 80% through the How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. On audio, I, I use Audible. I like Audible for my audiobooks. 
that is like a 12 hour book um, and I've just been kind of taking it in small pieces because it's intense like it's a lot of information to absorb and I've been trying to really like thoughtfully and carefully process it so I've been going through that a little bit at a time I do also like to keep up with my current podcasts and things like that. Mostly I listen to audiobooks when um, I am out walking Winnie or if I'm doing some sort of um, or big organizing project in my house, which there's been a lot of lately. <laughs> so that works out well. Um, lots of amazing music has come out recently. Oh my gosh, The Chicks, Dixie Chicks, changed their names to The Chicks um, for reasons which you can totally look up and I'm not going to go into here because I won't say it right but I applaud their tenacity and their you know their vision uh, but the new album Gaslighter is amazing that is like the soundtrack of like the first half of 2019 <laughs> I mean the second half of 2019 and the first quarter of 2020 for me um, I feel like it's not quite my soundtrack anymore, but it's not that far away. I remember it well. Anybody who's uh, gone through divorce and or separation or just relationship issues at all, I mean, that's your jam. I highly recommend it. Also in that vein, a, a newer release, but one that I've been listening to a lot in the last week especially, is Taylor Swift's Folklore. Again, very... Um, circumstantially appropriate to that time frame of my life. Again, I feel like I'm in a different place emotionally from it, but I, it's fresh in my memory and I just, it's a beautiful album. It's a beautiful album. So much heart in it. Um, and then lastly, the most recent release that I've been listening to lately has been the Pentatonix. Uh, you guys know I'm a longtime fan. I just love acapella and they just, they rock it. Uh, they're at home release. I just love it and they're just all this that's one I want kind of want to be have a little bit more like pumped up <laughs> feel like the other two albums are a little bit more moody um, but yeah so much good there's so much more good music but those are the ones that are kind of top top of mind for me right now um, and speaking of music I have not been consuming a lot of video like I don't I haven't watched TV in a long time and I I haven't even watched movies or, or really much YouTube at all, but what I have been watching when I want to watch something is music videos and dance videos on YouTube. Short, it's like all that I have the attention span for lately. I don't know. Uh, but I really, really love Dodie. I just discovered her as an artist. She's a singer-songwriter and she has a YouTube channel. I love her music, I love her albums and her EPs and everything, but I really love her YouTube videos where she sings her music and then she also talks you through. She's insanely talented. She just picks up random um, instruments like the clarinet and the cello and, and just starts playing them, the piano and the guitar and the ukulele and the blah blah. Um, but I just, I love her music, I love her vibe, I think she's, just such a, an awesome creative, um, and I've really been enjoying following her on YouTube. And then for, da I don't know, dance videos have just been making me happy, and I recently discovered this dancing duo, I hope I say their names right, Sean Liu and Casey Rice. They're young, um, but they're super talented, super talented, and I love watching their dance videos. Uh, they do kind of more contemporary, slash even more like hip hop -y, but definitely contemporary dance and um, just so much emotion, so much on the, I don't know, so much raw emotion there and I've been really enjoying it. So that's what I've been consuming in terms of multimedia lately. Lots of music and um, lots of music essentially. Uh, for tasty treats, I've been doing a bit of baking lately. I discovered this recipe. Um, Six Vegan Sisters is a, a cooking blog that I love for baked recipes. Um, if you're looking for dairy-free, egg-free recipes, they are the place to go. All of their recipes I've ever baked, my favorite chocolate chip cookies, um, cakes, frostings, they just turn out incredible. You do not miss the dairy and the eggs in those recipes. It, it, they're just incredible. They recently released a, what do they call it? Wait, I wrote it down. A caramel chocolate chip cookie bar recipe. 
I think it's the best thing I've ever made. <laughs> My parents also think it's the best thing I've ever made. I just made them a batch the other day to put in their freezer. Um, dairy-free caramel. I thought, I thought that you couldn't do dairy-free. You can do dairy-free caramel, and it is delicious. So it's a bit of a time-consuming recipe. You have to be really patient making caramel, and it's a multi-layered like baking process. But it's really not hard. It's just time-consuming. Um, totally worth it. I highly recommend trying this recipe. It does not matter if you bake with dairy or not. It is delicious and totally worth it. The time, like I said, and also I just last night actually baked their, their version of the double tree cookies. I guess double tree has this like famous cookie. It's got walnuts and oats and chocolate chips in it. And um, they recently released the recipe to the public. Well, they, um, the Six Vegan Sisters made a dairy-free, egg-free version. They are really good. They are sinful. They're actually, it's a really easy dough to make too. Super easy. Only bakes for like 20-ish minutes. So worth it. Yum. I'll link both the recipes below, but oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And then for the kids, we uh, were very excited here in Illinois. We moved into, I think, phase three or phase four, I can't even keep track anymore, but they opened the parks. Um, and we live not too far away from a playground that we've been eyeing since we moved in, but you know, we haven't been able to go play. Well, now that it's it's been safe to play, they opened it up at the beginning of the month. We go every day. And so what we do is the kids pile into our little radio flyer wagon and I pull them over and I walk the dog at the same time. And we spend a couple hours at the park every morning uh, and they love it. And that wagon is part of the experience that they love. Now, I bought the wagon years ago when Cece was probably about Donnie's age or even a little younger. And it's just been a staple. The kid, I don't know. There's nothing more fun than a wagon ride, right? Especially with somebody else's your pack mule. <laughs> Me. Um, I'm looking up what exactly the one we have is the all-terrain cargo. I like that it kind of looks a bit like the original wagon. The plastic ones are great too. They're probably, to be honest, a little bit more practical. I just really like the look of this one. And as a mom with just one kid at the time and not a lot of experience, I went with that. Maybe would have made a different choice with the, having more experience in the two kids, the ones with the plastic ones with the seats. And I don't know, it works out fine. They love it. It's easy enough to pull. The big wheels help a lot too, because I can pull it over the mulch in the playground and, and across the grass and stuff with no issue. Um, and then we actually have a little plaque on it with our name. It says the Ross family because why not personalize it? So that's been a favorite for sure. Going to the park is a favorite. And the sand toy set we have is actually a Melissa and Doug sand toy set. I think it's like a seaside baking theme, but they love it. So of course we, we bring our own toys and, and uh, you know we try to be extra careful and encourage only touching your own toys at the sandbox. And it's definitely a, an interesting experience being at a public playground with little kids. I mean, luckily the playground we go to, usually we're the only ones there and sometimes there's maybe one or two other kids, but trying to, um, I don't know, playground etiquette is, I, I find it like just, it's just still new to me and a little weird to navigate as an introvert. Uh, but especially with, you know, trying to explain to children the importance of social distancing. I don't know. It's hard, it's, it's, it definitely has its new challenges. But anyway, um, we've been enjoying that and they love their little sand, their little sand toys. And um, yeah, that's just been a fun thing. I also bought a whole bunch, maybe like even 20 or so. I, it was a lot. I, I did a huge um, haul of children's books. I wanted to kind of plump up our collection anyway. I wanted to get some new books in the mix. And especially with, I'm just trying to bring more awareness um, and more um, inclusiveness into our book shows. Um, I took a lot of suggestions from some of the new uh, accounts I'm following on Instagram, Conscious Ki The Conscious Kid, and I think there's the other ones like The Diverse Bookshelf, or I can't remember exactly what it's called. I will link them below where I got these suggestions from. I'm just gonna show you a few of our favorites and I'll link them below too. This one, Mixed. But I'm not even gonna try to pronounce everybody's name because I am not gonna do a, 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 a solid job. 
Uh, Julian is a mermaid. This is so cute. Love this one, the proudest blue. Such an amazing story. And the artwork in all of these is phenomenal. This is one of Cece's personal favorites, What If? And this one, both kids love this one, ta-da. Now these books don't necessarily kind of, they don't necessarily like explicitly address racial diversity and inclusion and things like that, but it's more of a, it's more subtle. It's more um, bringing different pictures and images and skin tones and backgrounds and cultural experiences, differences, etc., into our everyday stories. Um, and that is a very powerful tool for teaching um, in a very kind of organic way, in my experience. We love our books around here, and we read every day, and those are just some of our favorites. Anyway, those are my uh, current favorites at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'd love to know some of the things you're using and loving this summer, if you care to share. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you real soon. Take care, you guys. Bye.